Surprise, shock, reduced spots. Oh, hello. So disgusting, I'm a little bit embarrassed of this. 10 out of 10. All right, Nars, calm down. Okay, today's question for you guys is, what is a product that you have used up to the very end and repurchased multiple times? I feel like everyone has that holy grail product that they have just like used to death and completely used up and will keep buying. So please let me know down below what that product is for you. But I'm gonna be talking about today products that I've actually used up over the past like, I don't know, I guess between six months and a year. Some of them are monthly things that I use up every month or two. And some of them I've literally had for a year and have finally used them up. I've got a lot of makeup, so if I use something up, you know that I actually really like it. This video is not sponsored. Most of the stuff I've actually bought with my own money and it's things that I just keep repurchasing and I thought it might be interesting. I actually saw Jamie Genevieve do this video and that's where I got my inspiration from. Let's just get right into it. The first thing I'm gonna talk about because this is what I've literally just used and nearly used up and nearly just dropped on the floor. Okay, there's still a little bit left in this but I recently threw one of the smaller bottles of this away. This is the Batiste Dry Shampoo. I get through this on a maybe fortnightly basis. Definitely within a month, I will have used up one of these big ones. And I have not yet found a dry shampoo that I like better than the Batiste one. I've been using this since I was about like 17. I'm not the biggest fan of the original scent. I really like the cherry one and the floral one and basically everything that's not this. I know that a lot of people don't like this because it leaves a white cast in their hair, but what I do is I spray this all over my hair pretty much every single day because I'm lazy and I'd like to extend the amount of time I can not wash my hair for, for as long as possible. I just spray this all throughout my roots, then I flip my head upside down, and then I properly like rub it in vigorously. <laughs> for me, it's perfect. Let's do some kind of like general sort of beauty bits first, and then I'll move on to the actual makeup. The next thing that I've actually used up two of, these are both empty. Well, this one's got a tiny bit left in it, and as you can see, I am fully trying to squeeze the last little bit out. This is the number seven Protect and Perfect Intense Advanced Facial Sun Protection SPF 50. That is a mouthful, um, but I use SPF 50 every day just because I'm extra paranoid that I'm gonna get wrinkly and I don't really want any sun damage. Because when I was a teenager, nobody told me that if you just sunbathe and don't put any SPF on your face that you would get premature wrinkles. But since being clued up about it, I now don't even go outside, even in the winter in England when it's like four degrees without SPF 50 on my face, which is probably very excessive, I know, but um, you gotta do what you gotta do. And I really, really like this one. It is a little bit more thick and a little bit more on the oilier side of SPFs for my face that I have tried. However, I do have oily skin. Surprise, shock. And I find that as long as I put this on and then use a mattifying primer after that I have no problems with it. So I just put this all over my face and my neck and uh, yeah. I clearly like it a lot because I've used up two of these. You can get it in boots. Another one that I really like and I did use up was the Body Shop one, but I did throw that in the bin a couple of months ago. Next is a tan. This is the only tan that I've actually pretty much, okay, next time I use this, I'm gonna have run out of it, so I thought I'd include it in this video. So it doesn't technically count, but you know, it's down to here. This is the Saint-Tropez Self Tan Purity Bronzing Water Gel. I really like the smell of this. It is a bit more of a pricey one. The main thing that I like about this tan and others that are in this similar sort of form, and the reason I've used this one up nearly, is because it's clear, so it doesn't get all over everything. And now I've become so much more used to using clear tans that I will sometimes scrub off my old tan in the morning, reapply a clear one, and just sit with it on throughout the day while I'm going about my business. And it doesn't get on your clothes, it doesn't get on your sheets, nowhere near as much as other tans, so that's why I just prefer it. And also when you put it on, it doesn't make you look like Shrek, so it's pretty great. I wouldn't say it's my favorite tan that I've ever tried. I've recently been using um, the, what's it called? Tanologist Dark Water Spray, which I really like. This is a really nice medium one. I now am slightly edging towards the more dark tans. I would say this is more medium. The last two things before makeup are two spot treatments. These are both actually completely empty. This is the Body Shop Tea Tree Solution. I have been through so many of these. I think it's just the Body Shop's Tea Tree Oil, which I know that you can get cheaper in other places. However, I'm not sure if they mix this with something. Actually, let me check the ingredients because when I've bought just straight up tea tree oil before from Boots or wherever you can get it from, I found that it was a little bit more harsh, whereas this one is slightly more gentle, but it's so good at like getting rid of spots. So every time I get a big spot coming, I put this on straight away, 
morning under my makeup, in the evening, and then it massively decreases my spots. Okay, I don't actually know. Oh, this is it's 15% tea tree oil. That is why, but it's really, really good for reducing spots, especially like deep under the skin ones. And then the second thing that I've used all the way up is another spot treatment. This is the Mario Badescu drying lotion. I actually used up all the liquid in this and now it just is powder and it's completely dried up. So I had this for ages. The only thing about this one is it does leave pink dots all over your face. So you can't use it underneath your makeup because um, I mean, it just makes you look a little bit crazy. And also this smells so bad, but it's kind of worth it because it works again really well to reduce spots. Oh, hello. Right, so moving on to the actual makeup stuff. This is the Revlon Colorstay Foundation. I've spoken about this for years on this channel, but this one is my new shade since February, since I started fake tanning. I had to get a darker shade. I used to be the shade, I think it was 150 buff. This shade is 220 Natural Beige, and as you can see from the side here, there's still some products that's all stuck around the sides of the um, tube, but I can't seem to get it off, and I don't know if the lid comes off. Oh, it does! Okay, so I'll be able to do it that way and get the lot, like scrape the edges of this out, which is actually really good, but um, it's mostly pretty much all gone and I have been using this like I said since February. It's just like a go-to foundation if I want something that I know is going to work and last and give me good coverage and all of that. Um, so yeah, that's on its way out for sure. For concealer, this feels so lightweight now that it's pretty much empty. This is the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in Fair Beige. This was actually my first one and I used this for a good year until it became too dry to like get any product out. And I bought this ages ago, so it's probably definitely out of date and it should probably be in the bin. This concealer was an OG and this is my pale shade, so I can't use it anymore, but it was just so good and I haven't repurchased it in a darker shade just because it's really hard to get hold of in the UK. Um, and also I am now loving my Too Faced one, which has also lasted me since February and is still going. And you get a lot of product in here. Uh, it says 10 mil. 10 ml of product for a concealer is really good. And like I said, this lasted me ages because you only need a little bit. I then have a couple of face powders which are empty. This one is the Rimmel Match Perfection Loose Powder. This is such a good drugstore powder if you're looking for a loose powder. I personally prefer loose powders because I find they set my makeup a bit better because they, I don't know, they just pack the product on a bit more. And this is such a good drugstore one. I think it's like 5 dollars maybe. And I have got the shade, I think it's just, yeah, transparent. And then in terms of pressed powders, one's that, one that I used up and literally have just got the edges left is the Revlon Color Stay Powder, I think. Oh no, this is the Revlon Photo Ready Powder in 010 Fair Light. This was clearly a good enough powder for me to use it all the way up. I think I just used this most times that I was filming um, and I would like take this round with me if I was going traveling somewhere because it's thinner to take around with you than a loose powder. Oh, and then another one of my powders, which is nearly empty to the point where I bought a new one, is the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder. This is the shade 05 Fair. I, I now use the shade 010 Light, I think. But as you can see, there's just a tiny bit of product left in here. I guess it doesn't really count as an empty. Um, but this will be empty very soon. It's a great powder. You can only get it in America though. If you're in the UK, you can get this on Amazon. I forgot about this when I was talking about my general skincare beauty stuff. This is the Kiehl's Creamy Eye Treatment with Avocado. This is an eye cream and look how much of this I've used. You can actually see the bottom of the jar, which I only noticed the other day when I was sticking my fingernail in there and hit plastic. So I guess you could say that this is my favorite eye cream. It's just really moisturizing. I put this on every night before I go to sleep and I really like it. Kiehl's stuff is really expensive, but it's really good. They have some amazing skincare and this has lasted me ages actually. So I think it's a good investment. You get 14 grams of product, but because it's an eye cream, you literally need the tiniest amount. Two brow products that I've used up. This one, I literally am on the last. Okay, look, look at this, that's it. That's all I've got left. There's about a millimeter of product here. This is the Benefit Precisely My Brow Pencil in shade three. It's just a really good brow pencil. It's really skinny. It's the perfect kind of texture between not being too soft, but not being too hard. And I do have quite a few backups of this. Um, so I have now moved on to my other one, which I think is shade 3.5. And then another product, which is also completely dried up. This is the Benefit Gimme Brow Plus in three. As you can see, all of the like writing is got scratched off it. And this one is pretty much 
completely dry. Again, another really nice brow gel to just make your brows look really fluffy and add a bit of texture to them. I love anything that gives me a fluffy eyebrow. Don't know if you've noticed recently. A mascara that I've actually used two of now. I'm just using up my other one, which is on its last legs again. Um, this one is completely dried up though. Like the brush just comes out dry. This is the Revolution the mascara revolution. I know that a lot of people don't like this mascara because they say that it's too clumpy, but if you've been here for a while, you will know that I love a clumpy mascara. And this just gives me so much volume and I love it and it doesn't transfer onto my face throughout the day, which is really important for me because I find that some mascaras, because um, my bottom lashes are quite long, they will kind of transfer to my under eyes throughout the day, as in not like flakes, but they will smear under my eyes, which is so weird. But this one doesn't do that. It's eight pounds. It gives me really big lashes and I love it. <laughs> Another product, which is actually so disgusting. I'm a little bit embarrassed of this. Uh, there's no writing left on here, but this was the Kat Von D tattoo liner. And I used this up to its last days. This, as you can see, is covered in makeup from, I don't know, something that must have leaked in my makeup bag, so it looks really disgusting, but this is such a good eyeliner. But I have now found something that has actually replaced this. I actually am now using the IT Cosmetics Superhero Liner, which to be honest, I'm kind of convinced are the exact same thing. They've got the same brush, they're both super black, both really waterproof, and they're pretty much the same price. So I'm now using the IT Cosmetics one. And in terms of single eyeshadows, the only one that I realized the other day, if you guys watched my me recreating Kim Kardashian's makeup video, I tried to put this on my eyes, realized that it's completely dried up, this was the Stila, um, yeah, look, as you can see, like, nothing comes off on my hand other than some glitter flakes. This was the Stila Smoky Storm Glitter and Glow Liquid Eyeshadow. These liquid eyeshadows are so good, and this shade was gorgeous, but apparently, I used it all up, and it is now completely dried, so this is gonna have to go in the bin, which is such a shame. I do have, uh, some of the other Stila ones, so I don't really need to repurchase this. Another thing which is completely gone, this is the Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray. This was a really nice personalised one that they gave me at an event, I think? Which was very nice of them, but oh my god, this is the best setting spray ever. I have never found one that beats this. I have actually done a video where I sprayed this on half of my face and didn't spray it on the other half, and the sides that had this on lasted longer, so I have proved that this actually works to extend your makeup. It's just such a good setting spray. If you're looking for a great one, this is so good. It is a little bit pricey, but it, like one of these big bottles does last you quite a long time. But if you want a good setting spray, 10 out of 10. So finally, onto my last two products. Uh, these are the two lip products that I've used up actually, I think, this whole year. Oh, no way, I do have a Lano Lips which I've used up. My Lano Lips Strawberry Lip Balm one of the best products of this whole year. Love that stuff. I've been through like two of them. I did have an empty one, but I think it is in a makeup bag, which is in my brother's room. So, sauce. Another lip balm that I have used up almost. This is on its last legs. It's got this much left. This is the Kiehl's Butter Stick Lip Treatment in SPF 30. This is such a moisturizing lip balm. I also have the Butter Mask, which is pretty much the same thing. Um, this one is not empty, but I think they're pretty much the same. Um, the Butter Mask will probably last a little bit longer because this one is a pot and it's got eight grams in it whereas the lip balm has got four grams in it this i'm finding is taking forever to get through and i use that one at night and i just chuck this one in my handbag for throughout the day it's such a nice lip balm it's just super moisturizing and i love it but it is expensive i think it's 19 pound 50 which for a lip balm is a lot of money so if you are going to invest maybe get the pot because this is going to last you longer and it's only like two pounds more expensive and then the final product which i have to say is probably been like my favorite lip product of 2019 this is the nars hidden pleasure afterglow lip balm I believe this was limited edition, and I think you can possibly get this on Selfridges, but I loved this to death. It is all gone, which is so sad. Like, you try to wind it up, and it's just, it's just, it's just gone. I guess I could try scraping out what is left in here. From what is in here, let me just kind of swatch on my hand. That is a swatch there. It's just a gorgeous smooth moisturizing lip balm with the tiniest hint of nude pink and I have been using this all year in combination with just a lip liner and this is pretty much what I wear on a daily basis but I have now moved on to this one which I actually found today this one is called sex symbol 
Right, Nars, calm down. You can see that this one is a little bit more pink pink. This one's a little bit more nude pink. So I do prefer the other one. But I am actually wearing this one today with a bit of the Primark nude lip liner on, which I then threw in the bin because it tasted gross because I've had it for like two years. But it's just so moisturizing, not sticky at all. It's like the best feeling thing on your lips and I love it. So that is everything that I've used up and love to death. Today's question comes from Cat Lady. This is a random one, but I really want to answer it. She said, I love you so much, Soph. Thank you so much. I love you too. What's your favorite Christmas song? Okay, my current favorite Christmas song. I've got a few. I'm going to give you a few recommendations. That's kind of cheating, but I don't even care. Favourite of all time, you know what? It could possibly be Winter Things by Ariana Grande. I love Mistletoe by Justin Bieber, obviously. I love Taylor's new Christmas song, which is called Christmas Tree Farm. Scouting for Girls, Christmas in the Air Tonight. Another great one. Santa's Coming For Us by Sia. Robbie Williams' new Christmas album is actually really good. There's also a song which is by Andy Powell and Louise Claire Marshall. Not gonna lie, I've got no idea who they are, but they have a song called Kisses for Christmas and it's such a good Christmas song. There are your recommendations. Those are my top at the moment. Um, but I mean, if you have any suggestions, please let me know down below because I love Christmas songs. Right, I'm gonna leave this here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Let me know down below what your like most used product is. Um, I hope you guys are all good and I will see you tomorrow for another video. Bye.